cranial cervical instability or atlanoaxial instability have become a more common talking point, especially people that are dealing with more chronic long-term health conditions because of the challenges it can provide. Now to start, it just means that the ligament structure that holds the end ranges of where your head can go may allow you to go in larger ranges than you typically would, but those also have to be mediated by the coordination of muscle contractility and how well those muscles do at coordinating where your head is in space. So those two things actually have to align. It's important because of all the things that transmit from your head to your neck and from your neck to your head. And anytime that we augment the positioning of our head on our neck, we run the risk of impeding the transmission of blood flow, of neurogenic function, of lymph. So people that have that instability to the point where it's creating occlusion in any of those systems can then generate symptoms that come from that. And that's where that diagnosis becomes important, but it's also important that we don't overdiagnose it and say that everyone that has that has these problems, we should work on this correction. Sometimes we want to think about it in terms of to what degree does your motor system control for that? For example, if I can take my elbow and I can push it past the end range, that's one thing. But if my muscles are tuned well enough or the tone is correct, where I'm not hypotonic, where I'm not finding myself in that extreme position all the time, then I'm going to be okay. Same thing here. If I'm not coordinated or the tonicity is correct, then I may find that even though I'm capable of exceeding those ranges of normal, that the coordination allows for me to still maintain function adequately. So you really have to combine looking at the structural component of CCI with what's actually happening functionally and making sure that we're not biasing one or the other.